So if you're struggling to declutter or if you're finding yourself stumbling through this part of your journey, sometimes the best approach to get through this without losing your footing, so to speak, is to figure out why you're stumbling and struggling in the first place. See, knowing your reason why for why you want to do something or why you're currently doing something is extremely important, but it's just as important, if not more important, to also understand why you are struggling to accomplish certain things and where you're stumbling most. Because when you do, it then becomes easier to move past it. Now, we all don't face the same stumbles and struggles throughout life. My experience will differ from yours and vice versa. However, what we're going through or have gone through plays a significant role in how we react to change in our lives. And in knowing this, it's safe to say that our minimalist and decluttering journeys won't be any different. Meaning there are going to be stumbles and struggles we face with letting go and the changes that come with it. But just like life, we have to step back and understand why those stumbles and struggles are there and how to best move past them. And oftentimes it just takes a simple mindset shift or a change of tone with the conversations we have with ourselves to do just that. Here are seven things holding you back from decluttering and how to move past them. Number one is, but what if I get rid of it and then I need it later? Okay, I know for a fact that I've said this phrase a handful of times and I'm sure you probably have as well. So I want you to try something before you commit to decluttering anything that fits in this category. I want you to take the item in question and I want you to think about a realistic time or a specific event in which you will actually need it. Okay, write it down and then come back a week or so later and ask yourself how realistic is this scenario? See, in most cases, if we're being honest, we end up holding on to these items thinking we'll need them later, but later never really comes, or if it does, for whatever reason, we either forget we have it, can't find it, or we end up using something else instead. Now, all this means is we have to take a step back and take a true assessment of our life, our routines, our habits, our hobbies, and really figure out if this item is worth holding on to or not. A good rule of thumb is if you haven't seen it, used it, or worn it in the last year, that you probably don't need it. Number two is fantasy self syndrome. Now, personally, I can relate to this one the most, and I've shared stories about how and why I've accumulated so much stuff throughout my journey. But the moment I decided to let go of my fantasy self, I also started to let go of the things I was holding on to. For me, my fantasy self was a little bit more than just the material things that I owned or the clothes that I wore it actually started to root itself into my personality. But it wasn't until I decided to break up with myself that I realized that I was off course. And sometimes for some of you, depending on your journey, you may need somebody in your life to be that reality check for you. Basically, in order to overcome this struggle, you have to be willing to have one of those breakup conversations with yourself. You know, the it's not you, it's me conversations. Yeah. Yes, one of those. And it's not going to be easy, but holding on to a version of yourself that's not your true self comes with so much more than you think, which is why I always stress that if you wanna have a clear space, you have to have a clear mind and heart first. Number three is feeling guilty or obligated to keep an item because it was a gift. See, one thing we have to remember is that gifts are given with the intention of expressing some form of thoughtfulness or love. Now, once we accept the gift, we are accepting the intentions in which the gift was given in. After that, all bets are off, as the saying goes, because it's then up to you to decide what to do with the physical item itself. If it's adding any purpose to your life, then keep it. But if it's just sitting in the back of the closet and not getting much use, then there's no real reason to hold on to it. Period. Number four is feeling like you've wasted a lot of money. Trust me, I get it. I've spent a lot of money on things that I've never used and or barely used. But something that I've had to remind myself of is that the money is already spent. It's gone. I can't get it back. I'm way past the seven days or 30 days return policy. So holding on to that item isn't going to bring the money back. Uh, went a lot of Abercrombie and Fitch stuff, right? So I bought these khakis from Abercrombie and Fitch, right? I wore them one time. One time, my senior year of high school, once. Look at this. I've never, they're in the mint condition. Brand new freaking, I wore them once. <laughs> now, if you're holding on to an item that you spent money on just because you spent money on it, 
and it's not adding any value to your life, you're not using it, consider letting it go. Have that conversation with yourself and at the same time, let go of the feelings you have about the money you've spent. It's gone. Just use this as a life lesson to shop smarter in the future. Number five is feeling overwhelmed because you have too much stuff and too many decisions to make. Okay, do yourself a favor and slow down. I get it, you have a lot of clutter and you wanna get it out of your life now, but trying to declutter everything at once is what's creating this overwhelming feeling that you feel. So instead, I want you to take your space and I want you to break it down into smaller sections and write a list on a piece of paper or on your phone. And as you start to declutter those specific sections, cross them off your list. I promise you, you'll start to make more progress on your journey this way or doing something similar to it than if you try to do everything at once. And number six is struggling to let go of sentimental items. Now, this is a tough one because it's easy for our emotions to attach themselves to an item, but it's difficult for us to then break this attachment later on in order to let go or even be open to the idea of letting go. And the thing that makes these sentimental items so difficult to deal with are the memories we hold on to because of them. See, we have to remember that the memories that we have live in our mind and our heart and not within the actual item itself. Now, this doesn't mean we have to get rid of everything we deem sentimental to us, but it does give us a starting point in which we should view these items, meaning we first have to be gentle with ourselves and understand that the memories are in us and not in the item. Secondly, we then have to approach each item and determine a solution that works best for us and that item. So is it taking a picture for ourselves and then donating the item? Is it finding a way to repurpose it so we can then appreciate it? Or is it giving ourselves a small dedicated space or basket to house the sentimental items that we want to keep and then donating anything else that doesn't fit? Either way, I want you to be gentle with yourself and understand that there isn't a hard and set rule you have to follow. Now, before I share the last point I have on my list, I have a question for you, and I wanna know what your biggest stumbles and struggles have been so far on your journey. Let me know in the comments so we can talk about it. But also, if this is your first time tuning in, welcome. I hope you're enjoying this conversation. And if you are, consider hitting that subscribe button down below so you can join this community and grow with all of us here, but also tap that bell so you're notified every time I drop a new video. And number seven is not knowing what to do with items you no longer use. Not often, but sometimes we give the excuse of, well, I don't know what to do with it, so I'm just going to keep it. And using this excuse over and over again results in a cluttered space filled with things you don't need or use. And honestly, I'm guilty of this too. Wait, what are you doing? I, I know it's a lot of stuff. I'll, I'll find somewhere to put it. I just don't know what to do with it right now. I'm, I'm just trying to record if that's, I'm, okay, okay. See, it's important to remember that we have plenty of options. We can donate to a local donation center. We can gift items to a child or family in need. We can sell larger or more valuable items, or we can throw away and recycle anything that's damaged or broken, given that we do it correctly. Either way, don't allow these excuses or stumbles and struggles to interrupt the flow of your journey. Stay focused, remember your why, and always stay true to you. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.